Hey everyone. Hello, everyone. We're live. I think we're, we're live. live. Hopefully everyone can hear us. <clears throat> yeah. Let's give Let's people a few minutes, few seconds here to join maybe. If you're on the line and can hear us, maybe just uh, use the chat function and say hello so we know that uh, you're out there. Okay, and can we see the presentation? Yes, it's a little uh, pixelated, but we can see it. I don't know what to do about that. So yeah, it's, yeah looks good. It's all right. Yeah. <laughs> Great. Thanks, Lisa. Okay, thanks for joining us today, uh, everyone. My name's Erica, I'm the Marketing Director for True North Accounting. Um, I'm joined today by Matt and Curtis, partners at True North. Um, most of you are familiar, I think, with True North. So we're, we're um, gonna spend today, um, the first half of the webinar, uh, really talking about a bunch of uh, various apps and how they can streamline your business processes if you can just switch to the next slide for me, Matt, we'll, I'll just quickly review the, the various apps. We're gonna talk about zero. Sorry, I was That's taking right. a message. <laughs> HubDoc, MyLiQ, Rotessa, and Pluto today. So the first half hour to 45 minutes probably will be breaking all those down and talking about how they can help you streamline your business. Uh, and then the second uh, portion of the webinar will really be dedicated to answering questions from all of you. So with that in mind, if you can use the ask a question function to submit any questions that you'd like Matt or Curtis to answer, um, it's just at the bottom of the screen next to the polls function. So if you click that, it'll open up a little window. Um, we appreciate you using that because you can upvote uh, others' questions if you're also interested in hearing the answer to it. And uh, we'll be focusing on the most popular questions during our Q&A. And then uh, my, co my colleague Lisa will be moderating the chat function on the, on the far right of the screen. If you're having any issues with audio or video or want to comment or just have a general um, comment for, for everyone, you can use that chat function. Okay, a little bit about True North before we get uh, going here. As many of you are clients, you're aware, we are an Alberta accounting firm with locations in both Oak Tokes and Bridgeland in Calgary. We offer bookkeeping, accounting, and tax services for incorporated small businesses, solopreneurs, freelancers, and consultants. I'm gonna quickly introduce Matt and Curtis before we start. So Matt Peterson is a lifelong entrepreneur and he earned his CPA designation while working at Price Waterhouse, Waterhouse Coopers, excuse me, from 2009 to 2014. He's the founder of True North Accounting, a craft beer aficionado, and cares deeply about the success of his clients. Curtis uh, is a, it's also a partner, and uh, Curtis grew up on Vancouver Island and moved to Alberta in 2011. He joined the True North Accounting team in 2016 and became a partner two years later. He is also a CPA and leads the client engagement practice for True North Accounting. Curtis will fight the CRA for you. He'll stay up all night to meet your deadlines and genu genuinely cares about the success of your business. Over to you guys. Yeah, so we're gonna talk about business apps, like extra extra tools that you can use to really streamline business functions that you, um, every business owner has to deal with and, and struggles with. So first one we're gonna talk about is Xero. Um, Xero with an X, as you can see in the, the website there and the, the logo. Um, so what is what is Xero? We, it's cloud-based bookkeeping and accounting software. Um, aimed at small businesses. We use it ourselves internally, and it has a number of features that make life make life easier, save save critical amounts of time and give you give you extra information essentially. So it's accounting software specifically for small businesses. It lets you automate everyday tasks. The automation part is is phenomenal. Um, you get up-to-date financials and you can run your business from anywhere. You can it's cloud-based obviously so similar to other um, QuickBooks online is a well-known one that's also gone 
cloud-based now. So you can you can access it from anywhere, any laptop. Um, there's an app you can you can log in from anywhere. You don't have to be sitting at home in front of your computer. So um, it the number of features that just really really like the, the, so I guess the automation part. Um, you can you can connect bank feeds to it. So for the bookkeeping side of your business, whether you're doing the bookkeeping or you have someone else helping helping with the bookkeeping side of things, you can. And you you want to get away from the archaic kind of enter data line by line in Excel or a paper paper general ledger, and Zero can automatically connect to your bank and pull all of your banking and credit card feeds right in. So you've got all of the transactions running through your business from your bank and credit card, and it pulls all those all those data points in where you can you can just start to categorize them really. Um, it allows you to set rules, bank rules. Um, there's a few different types of rules you can set where you can you can sort of help Zero learn what it is that you're doing. So if it's pulling in all of these banking feeds, and every single a, a perfect example is every month, every bank statement you always see bank charges six dollars or twelve dollars or whatever it may be, and zero the bank feed will automatically pull that in being a line item on the bank statement and it'll you can set a rule for it to automatically know that that needs to be booked to the correct interest in banks or interest in bank charges um expense account so it's it you can teach it and and tell it to with by creating these rules a little setup work but you can have it you can really customize it down to the point where you're Common common items are almost booking themselves in in certain situations. So um, this slide kind of shows you what it what it kind of looks like on the various whether you're on a tablet, a phone, a, a laptop, computer. Um, you can see on the the right side there's a dashboard that Zero has where you can again the the customizability with Zero is huge where you can customize certain things whatever you can customize the dashboard to right in your face when you log in every day. You're seeing what's important to you. You're, you've got it set up to maybe you're tracking your bank balance is often a, it's a common one. It's a default one on there. Um, you can tra track your outstanding receivables, payables. Um, you can really kind of get good insights right from the dashboard. And beyond that, the um, the reports you can create. You can it's got the standard income statement ones and that, but the the powerful how powerful the reporting functions are pretty good and the customizability as well where you can you can have a have a report created and customize it and save it with it's it's user friendly to the point where it's pretty easy for anyone without a bookkeeping background to do this so you could customize a report that's only showing you key features that are key financial parts of the business that are important to you and one click, you're you're at the report. So, um, why it's awesome? It's awesome for some of the stuff I was just rambling off about there. But it's yeah, it's it's really good looking uh, customizability. The invoicing function, customize. I didn't even start talking about the customizability about invoices, but invoice reminders and how quickly you can edit the line items on invoices that you're creating and one two clicks you're sending them off emailing that invoice to somebody so it really helps to, to get paid quicker as well um, the dashboard i mentioned there i talked about you can see receivables payables monitoring cash flow and that um, and then where it says zero has a giant marketplace of integrated apps so it, it's integrated with quite a number of different commonly used apps, whether they're Square, PayPal, Stripe, it, it, it integrates with quite a few. So you can, you can um, pull information to and from um, other apps you might already be using is, is pretty, pretty big. Um, the cost, there is a free trial like many other programs that you'll find. There's a 30 day free trial and then you can see the prices for the starter plan, um, standard and premium. So it's, it is a little more costly than some other programs you could you could find out there with a quick uh, Google search, but it, it's definitely more powerful, and um, we love it. We stick with it. We we had it for a while now, so um, we can speak on behalf of how good it is. Yeah, and I guess I'll just add in like one of the reasons we 
choose to use zero over QuickBooks Online is really that it was, it seems to have been made more for the small business owner and less for the bookkeeper. So it uses words like money spent and money, money received versus debits and credits. It's got um, that, the, well, its tagline is beautiful bookkeeping or beautiful accounting, something like that. Because the design is really like front and foremost, like on that dashboard, in the mobile app, um, just every feature that it has, it's, it just looks familiar and comfortable. If you're, if you're used to using other cloud apps, it, like Instagram, for example, or something like that, it's, it just feels like it's modern and it's smart. And yeah, it'll remember the last things you did, like how you reconciled the last few items. Um, so it's just like little shortcuts all over the place as you use it more and more. It, like, I wouldn't go as far to say as there's like AI, but it does, it's like machine learning and it does, um, yeah, it uses your past behavior to predict your future behavior. And um, one, of the, one of the best things about it is this find and recode function especially if you're doing your own bookkeeping, what that function is, is you can, say you booked a monthly bank charge to um, the wrong account, for example, like, or there's interest included in like a line of credit payment and you need to go back and fix that to put it to interest expense. You can go and click all those monthly transactions that included interest and then make the adjustment straight from like the source, so there's no like adjusting journal entry, you're just redoing an entry that you did before that was wrong. Um, I guess it'd be easier to, to show you if I had that slide, but that find and recode function just allows you to correct mistakes so easily. Um, that's something that no other accounting software has. And yeah, just the, you can make a report and set it like your cost of sales and your just like the way you want your monthly P&L to look, you can set that and then it just updates each month using that template, you like make it a, into a template. Um, so yeah, it's, it's great. Um, that's how we send all, or we have been using it for five years, sending all our invoices, automated reminders, on our invoice, you can click um, pay by Stripe, pay by, or like pay by Visa or MasterCard, um, pay by PayPal. So it's got, um, it's got the biggest app marketplace. Like it, yeah, there's hardly a software out there that helps small business that doesn't integrate with zero. Okay. Um, yeah. And if you have more questions about zero, put them in the ask a question, um, piece down below, and then we'll get to it at the end. And so one, one last thing, like if you've used or attempted to use any other um, bookkeeping software before, um, like anything it does, once you use it, you become familiar and zero in, in my experience, I've had my hands on so many different types of, of accounting bookkeeping software. It's one that's, it's, it's much easier to just pick up and, and kind of, it is tailored to someone that is not a bookkeeper. So it's, it's great for that, for, for learning from scratch. Yeah, and I guess the one limitation on Zero would be that it doesn't have a payroll function built into it like QuickBooks does. Um, and like some of the old like Simply or uh, Sage 50 has, like people keep that kind of antiquated bookkeeping software because it has payroll but Zero does integrate with so many really good pay, like there's a company called WagePoint that all they do is payroll and they do it better than Sage 50 or QuickBooks and it just, yeah, it brings in the entry each month and um, you can set recurring payroll. But we don't have WagePoint in this presentation, but um, yeah, so that is a reason people do choose other softwares is that payroll function, but there's ways around it. Um, okay, HubDoc is a great Canadian company, started in Toronto, and just last year, or this year, uh, Zero purchased it, and so now it's um, 
just fully integrated into the Zero suite. What HubDoc does is, yeah, it acts as like a digital filing cabinet where you can keep all your receipts safe, you can keep all your bank statements, um, and like some people use it to keep their like will and their life insurance documents and anything that is important that might get lost if it's paper just hanging around the house or if it's in your email account you can just like if you get an email with your um, insurance documents you can forward it to your hubdoc you basically get like a a true north accounting at hubdoc.com email address or whatever your company would be called and any email you have with an important document, you can just forward it to that address and it gets stored. Um, so that, that's not a whole lot different than Dropbox or yeah, Google Drive, but where HubDoc really is different is in that it can fetch documents on its own. So it can learn, like you basically log in, um, like from your HubDoc dashboard, you would log into your online banking and then it would learn your credentials and it would log in each month and save your bank statements and your credit card statements in your HubDoc account. Um, it will also download the transactions each month and save them in like a CSV or an Excel document, which I know a lot of people like doing that to kind of like, well, it's how we do our bookkeeping, um, but some people like to just sort and um, just do their own kind of anal expense analysis using those transactions. Um, so HubDoc will do that every month because um, those transactions, they, you're, you can only go back six months. So if you set this up, it saves it each month. And then when you go and do your annual bookkeeping for the last 12 months, you have all those transactions there. Um, you can also teach it to go into like your your vendor accounts like Amazon. You can teach it how to log into your Amazon and save all the receipts for all your pur purchases in the last month. Um, Rogers, Telus, TD Insurance, um, like all these vendors where you have bills that you want to keep and have that backup in case of an audit, um, you can just teach it to log in and save all these like critical business documents all in some in a safe place that's digital, that you can grant access to your lawyer, your accountant, your financial advisor, um, your business partner, your your spouse, anything like that. It's um, it's easy to share and to keep them safe. The other key feature that makes it kind of different than everything else is it's got OCR technology, which is like um, optical character recognition, I think. But anyways, it will read an invoice and then populate an entry and push that entry to zero. So I'll go through exactly how that works at the end, but basically I get an invoice emailed to me. I forward that email to HubDoc. HubDoc um, reads the invoice, populates, okay, who's it from? What's the date? How much is it? Is there GST? What's the payment date? It will populate all that, send it to zero as a bill. And yeah, it shows up on your dashboard so you know, okay, I gotta pay this invoice from my um, marketing agency or your IT company on the 15th of October. So yeah, we'll go through how that works. Um, it's also got an app that you can just take a picture of a receipt, throw out the receipt. It gets saved in your HubDoc account. Um, digital copies of receipts do, they're good enough for the CRA these days. Like, there was a time where CRA wanted paper, but that I think COVID has really put that requirement to bed. Like now, digital is fine. Um, so yeah, that is HubDoc. It, it looks like this. It, again, it's well designed. Um, you'll sh I'll show you like an actual um, like our dashboard at the end when we go through the example. So again, it just extracts key data from your receipts, invoice, like it will read a picture of a receipt, like a Starbucks receipt, and then prepare that entry. But for anybody that still has the the filing cabinet with receipts that are so old that they're turning to dust, it's a great way to replace that. Get you get you up to the 
20th century, 21st century. Yeah. Yeah. And if it reads it wrong because it's like half faded, you can correct it. Um, and then, yeah, it makes it like all your receipts are searchable and in chronological order. Um, yeah. So it's just, it's great. And if you get, if you have a paid zero account, um, Hubdoc's now included in that. So that's another reason why zero might be a little bit more expensive. Um, but Hubdoc alone is 25 bucks a month, so you can still get it. Okay, Mile IQ. Curtis, you want to take this one? Yeah, um, it's Mile IQ, mileage, 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 mileage. Vehicle expenses, if you're running a small business, business doesn't actually own the vehicle, then mileage is, is really important to track. Even in most cases where the business does own the vehicle or vehicles, you still, in most circumstances, need to track your mileage. So if you ever dealt with us before you, and you've gone through the year-end process, you know that we're always asking, what's your mileage? Have you recorded your mileage? Do you know what it is? How have you? So it, it always comes up. And My Like You is, a, is an app on your phone that you can download for free from the App Store, and it tracks it automatically for you. Um, Mileage is a it's a it's a really big write off. It's a huge tax deduction, and it's also one of the bigger pain points when it comes to if the CRA wants to review or audit something. Mileage is is always ranked pretty high up there in what they end up asking for. So um, why it's important? It does it it does it automatic automatically. It's accurate and you can at any point in time you can access an entire backup from their website that shows every data entry of where you went and and it's gps tracked you don't nobody has time or nobody remembers every single time to stop and mark down mileage in a in a book or update anything after every single drive so it uh you can go to the next slide here Matt. it or maybe it's the other one but so essentially you've got this app on your phone and it's automatic. You don't have to open it. It's automatically detecting when you're in a vehicle, when that vehicle is moving, how far you're traveling, where you're going. And you can do it as frequent or as infrequent as you want. But when you open up the app, it's going to load, um, as you saw in the previous, previous slide, it'll load your trips and it just, it lets you swipe right for business and swipe left if it was personal. You can add extra details, parking info, why you went on the bit. Like it lets you add a little more backup if you want, but um, and it's it's automatically calcu calculating what the what the mileage write off is, so you know how much the company owes you for for mileage throughout the month or throughout the year, however frequently you want to kind of square up with that. But um, yeah, it, it integrates with quite a few platforms. Um, there's there's a free version. Free version allows you can see on the bottom 40 free drives per month, which may or may not be enough. So it's it's relatively inexpensive. If you pay by like on the go by month, it's five ninety nine a month. If you pay the whole year at once, they give you a discount at four ninety nine. The cost of the app is even a tax deduction, but um, yeah, it's it it's great for audit proofing. You always have the backup of your mileage. No matter what, you can access reports like you're seeing here. Um, and it's, yeah, it's kind of one of those things where all you have to do is open up the app once in a while. And as long as you can recall where you were going and why, you want to maybe do it once at the end of every day kind of thing, end of the week. Um, and yeah, you've got, you've got mileage tracked automatically, so you're solving a big headache there. And you're solving an even larger headache should the CRA call and ask you for for some mileage logs for the vehicle expenses that are being claimed. So, yeah, and I, get, I just want to speak a little bit to like integrations with all these apps. Like integrations are great, but they're often like a marketing tool. Like, oh, this app wants to get on the zero marketplace, so they create an integration. But really, the integration doesn't really help. And I think Mile IQ is a good example of that. Like you're, you're tracking your kilometers and you're, you're classifying each trip 
doing your your Tinder swiping left and right. Yeah. Um, and really, you're just like, you want to report for your whole year for your account or for the quarter, whatever it is. Um, and then that, and then your accountant needs to do a manual entry, give you credit to your shareholder loan, take GST. Like there's, there's calculations that we do on our end that an integration just, it wouldn't help. So um, yeah, just always be wary when you're like evaluating because there's other mileage tracking apps as well. Um, yeah, just think about, okay, is this integration actually useful? And like Slack is a great example. There's so everything integrates with Slack, but it's just annoying. They're all annoying integrations that just um, every, yeah. Anyways, like you, you, there's a lot of integrations you just don't even want to like enable. And I think Mile IQ is one of them. Um, again, with my like you, I've been using it for a few years now, and um, one complaint from a lot of the other apps is the data usage and a drain on the battery. Like, you don't have to open the app when you get in your car, close it when you're done your trip. It, like, it all just does that and stacks up your queue of trips to later be classified. Um, but I haven't noticed any increase in data, like any significant increase. Um, battery life is fine. So I know that's a concern for a lot of people, but yeah, I got no complaints with this app. It's it's awesome. I think every business owner, sole proprietor should use it. Like it's great. Rotessa, you want to take that one, Curtis? Yeah, um, it's a software for helping getting paid, really. Setting up pre-authorized debits from, from customers. So um, we use it, we've used it for a while. Um, it's an easy, better way to get paid. You don't have to worry about following up with people or um, constantly calling the same person every time you you invoice them. Or if it's it's great for for monthly amounts, it, but you can set it up for any number of installments you want to happen. It's very customizable. You get the pre-authorized debit information from a from a client or customer. Um, it's got their like kind of void check details, the transit routing number, the bank number, right? And once you have an agreement signed off, you you upload that and you set up the transaction and you can choose the number of installments, whether it's annual, it's happening once, maybe it's happening twice, maybe it's recurring every month, every week, every quarter. Um, and it just is automatically, yeah, editing, just billing, billing, um, whatever amount you, you kind of set up, you've got a dashboard, you get notifications if payments didn't go through, you get notifications, emails, kind of a report of the, the ones that were successful, like a summary throughout the month. Um, it's really quick and easy to set one up and it's really quick and easy to remove one if you don't need it anymore. Um, it does, it, it does take a lot of the hassle out of, um, manually kind of tracking down a payment each month or um, catching up payments for someone that maybe a customer owes you a bunch of money and you've got to um, set up a payment plan with them. It works awesome for that. Um, there's, yeah, the, the reports and summaries are a little limiting, but um, the customizability of how you can get the money, selecting the date it comes out on, and how frequent, how many times it's going to reoccur is, is really easy to do. So, um, the fees, uh, so you see based on the number of transactions, the fees can range depending on how much you're using it, how many people you have, um, or how many number of transactions are flowing through there every time. And then as you can, if it's more than 250 per, per month, then you can pay for, for each transaction instead of monthly. We, yeah, I don't, I don't know. It's, it, there's not too much to talk about. It's really easy to set up and get going and um, use it. So, Yeah, if, if anybody has monthly recurring um, billings with their clients, it, like it's, it's so great. And their zero integration is, it's new, but it's also pretty useful. Like if, if your monthly billing changes each month and you create that invoice in zero, it will then talk to Rotessa and set that payment based on on the new invoice. 
but yeah, Reptest is great. It saves us a ton of um, credit card processing fees on Stripe. Um, so yeah. So Pluto is, it does the same thing as Rotessa. Um, like it does collections, but it also does payables. So this is a, the way we're going to talk about Pluto today is, is more on the payables side and how you can <clears throat> push a invoice that's emailed to your HubDoc account, enter or use the OCR and then enter all the details in HubDoc. It sends it to zero, creates the bill, and then zero can initiate the payable in Pluto. So Pluto basically just allows you to schedule payments. Um, part of like good cash flow management is collecting on your invoices fast and then paying your in your payables slow. Um, so you can schedule schedule an invoice to be paid on the date that it's due. Um, and you can do you can set up a bunch of um, invoices to be paid throughout the month. They could do uh, direct deposit or it can fire off e-transfers. Um, so it's very closely tied in with zero. Um, and there's like a full sync there. It's more than just an integration, it's a sync. Um, and yeah, it it's well designed. It has like it assists with scheduling the payments, but also the proper approvals on payables. You can if there's like a hierarchy in your company, you can set those up. And then it has a clearing account in zero for so you know when bills are being paid, and that comes into your zero dashboard, so you can tell exactly okay what what bills are yet to be paid this month on any given day compared to your, your receivables. So you can always track cash in, cash out. Um, and, and reporting, I haven't used the reporting function too much, but yeah, it's just generally it's, it is an APAR um, program that just helps you manage your cash flow. It's mobile friendly. It, um, it's 25 bucks a month, but it pays for itself pretty easily, I think. So if you're interested, you do have to like set up your bank account, get like they're, they have high security. So it takes maybe like five or six days to set up because they need like your driver's license. Anytime you're, you're taking money from somebody's account or using software to, to make payments, they want to verify that you're, you are who you say you are. So yeah, those are the, five apps that we would recommend. Um, yeah, your accounting software, your receipt management, your mileage tracking, and then your collections and payables. So we'll just go through a quick example of how these tools kind of work together, um, specifically on the payables function. So if you do have more than like 10 invoices that you have to pay each month, it might be worth um, putting into place a process somewhat like this. So this is just basically what we do. Um, so slide one, this is for a scanner I bought through our um, IT or managed service provider, Proactus. Um, it's 672 bucks, I ordered it. They have 30 day payables. So I ordered it yesterday, September 15th. The payments due October 15th. So I get this, I have like a, a rule set up in my email that like invoices go to this invoice folder and every email that goes into that folder gets forwarded to our HubDoc um, account. So here's the email, it shows up in HubDoc. This is what HubDoc looks like. I've just blurred out some of the details here. Um, but these are all on the left side. These are all the other invoices that have got forwarded to the HubDoc account that need to get paid. And on the right side here, this is where it's actually like read the PDF invoice. So if you notice on the on this page, it's got the attachment as well as a link. So if there is, so it helps when there is the attachment. Um, but yeah, it 
it recognizes who it's from, the date, the date it's due, the total, the GST um, up here. So it prepares all that. And you can make adjustments to it if it reads it wrong. Um, I haven't seen it do that, but more so if you like take a picture of a receipt, um, there's more opportunity for it to read wrong. And then on the bottom part is where you entered the zero transaction. So you can schedule it as a computer equipment or a computer hardware purchase, like set it up as an asset. But you just choose the account you want to book it to and mark it as paid or unpaid. Some, like with a receipt from Starbucks, you obviously already have paid for that if you have the receipt. Whereas invoices, um, you want to schedule. So there's the uh, this tick mark at the top, so mark is paid. And then, like if you're if you're going through that process, you're basically audit proofing your company. You're attaching a receipt to the transaction. And if you ever got audited, you like in an ideal world, you'd have a receipt next to every transaction that has one. Um, so yeah, this is like this is what HubDoc does, and then you press publish, and it sends it to zero, so it shows up as a bill in zero. Um, and this, you just have the option to click the link to see the invoice, and like yeah, I just showed it here. It's the same invoice, and then it's got every all the details you entered in HubDoc. And this is where you can like, like an admin person or a bookkeeper can um, just have all your invoices to be paid waiting for approval. And so like if you're the one approving payments, they would all appear as like um, awaiting approval in like on your zero dashboard. You press approve and yeah, then once you do that, it pushes this to Pluto. So then it shows up. This is all the invoices we set up in Pluto. The one we're talking about is this last one here. So I just check that one off, continue. And then I just yeah, basically approve it. And these are all the pending payments. So you can see all these payments. You can schedule them to, to get paid on certain dates throughout the month. So it's not all being paid on September 14th or 18th. This one is scheduled to withdraw from our account October 7th. There is usually like a, a three to five day um, delay in when the vendor gets paid. So if I want it paid by October 15th, I, I schedule the withdrawal October 7th. I think that's a long weekend, so that's why I did that. Um, yeah, so then you know when when the payments are coming out. And that's just, yeah, how to set up like a tight process for your payables and using technology and audit proofing your business. And for the most part, you can do everything Matt just walked through there. You can do most of it from sitting on your couch watching Netflix or while you're making dinner, if you got your laptop open, you um, can get the invoice, schedule it, book, like save it, save a copy of it, schedule it to be paid, book it in your, in your bookkeeping software. Um, all while you're making dinner. Exactly. OK. Well, now we have a few minutes for questions. Do we have any questions from the crowd? No, not yet. Um, no, we haven't had any questions yet. But if uh, anyone's out there that uh, does have a question, feel free to put it either in the chat function or ask a question function, and we'll make sure to get Curtis and Matt to answer for you. Yeah, we didn't anticipate this one being too too question heavy, but um, I did want to say, like any of these programs, there's there's a lot of software and, and tools and apps out there that you can get to help you just to um, automate things, or just make life easier, save time, and you always just have they most of them all have a cost to them, right? So you just have to make sure that you feel like you're getting value for what you're paying for, and if it can save you time and let you not like fiddle around with a, a more minuscule task in the day to day, you can automate some of that or save a lot of time there. It's usually, it really becomes worth it after you, after you start doing it. Um, and like anything, once you, once you use any of these, you become more familiar and it's just second nature. It becomes routine. 
Um, yeah, try the free trial too. If there's a free trial, get it. Try it. Fiddle around with it. Play around if you like it. Awesome. If you don't, find a, find another one as well. But these are some of the best that we've we've come across. And all of them are just all about getting paid faster, like just managing your business in a more streamlined way and just not letting things fall through the cracks. Um, so yeah, the, the cost of the, the monthly cost of the apps um, more or less pays for itself because you're getting paid faster if you're using the automated or like the invoicing function in zero with the payment option, automated follow-up, um, or even re scheduled recurring monthly invoices to be fired out. Mile IQ, like if you're not, if you're not using some sort of mileage tracking app, you're you're leaving money on the table, unless you're diligent writing it on paper. Um, yeah. So if there's no questions. We don't need to keep you guys here any longer than we have to. I'm sure. Me and Curtis could go on for another 15 minutes, 19 minutes, talking about um, whatever comes to mind. But I do see in the poll that um, tax gray areas has the most votes for the next uh, next webinar. That should be interesting. Yeah, we're we're planning on doing a webinar a month. We kind of took July and August off, but. Um, yeah, the way we decided this topic was from the poll on the last webinar. So um, I think we have our, our topic for October. Um, yeah, absolutely. And, you know, if anyone has ideas of things they'd like to have covered, feel free to uh, send, a, send a note or, oh, we have a question here. You see, the okay, last minute entry. Yeah, we, we can answer that one for you, Andrew. Um, okay, so. Yes. The, the question is like, if, you're, if your company owns your vehicle and you're expensing, like the company's paying for your operating expenses like gas, do you still need to track your mileage? The answer is yes, because you still need to have like a percentage business use versus personal use. And unless you're driving like a, like a big cargo van or a flatbed truck with no back seat, like chances are there's going to be some personal use and some business use and the yeah so you, gotta, you, you essentially you need to if ever audited you need to if you're writing off all your fuel and and repairs and maintenance things like that then you've got to be able to show to the CRA that it's virtually all business use and they don't exclusively define what virtually all business use is but if you can find another way to make the argument that it's only used for business, that can work, but um, tracking your mileage and showing that it's like 90, 95% or 100% business use, then you're, you're safe, so. Yeah, and if you track it well for one year, they do allow, like, if your business is fairly consistent year to year, you can use that same percentage for future years in certain circumstances, but um, yeah, you, Everybody that's just starting out needs to track their mileage for sure. And 90% of all businesses do. Yeah. If they're exclusively um, work trucks, delivery vans, things like that, um, it's often pretty easy to justify the CRA that, hey, like I'm, this is just for delivery. It's not nobody's driving this home at night kind of thing. So um, but it's all, it never, it, it's never a bad idea to have your mileage tracked. Okay, we got another one. Um, Maria asks, do you need to keep all your paper receipts? So again, like if you have a digital copy of, re of your receipt, you can throw out the paper copy as long as you have that safe. Um, the government accepts those, but yeah, if, it's a, if you're writing it off as a business expense, you need to have that receipt. Well, the government asks for two things, proof of payment and proof of purchase. So proof of payment would be like the credit card um, statement that you use to buy the widget. And then the receipt is the, um, yeah, is the proof of payment that you bought it from Staples or something. And Do we? As, as the accountant, no, we don't, we don't want to see everybody's Tim Hortons receipt and 
staples receipt. If it's a piece of equipment, something that we need to set up as an asset, or if it's significant, then yeah, we will ask for it. But generally, we just get people to separate their business and their personal and have a business bank account or bank account and credit card and everything that goes through those two business accounts we're going to assume is for business purposes and that kind of acts as your your ledger but no yeah for, your, for yourself you need the taxpayer needs to have all their receipts in case you ever get audited as the accountant we usually only request like like Matt said, every single Tim Hortons receipt. If we see on a credit card statement it says Tim Hortons, it's pretty easy to figure out what that is. It's usually the bigger item um, or things that we just can't figure out. We'll need clarification uh, to make sure it gets recorded properly, really. Yeah, like if you go to Home Depot and you buy a couple hundred bucks worth of stuff for your house and a couple hundred bucks, of, or Costco is a good example. Um, some stuff is business, some is personal, then yeah, we if we're gonna actually like split all that out properly, yeah, keep that receipt. But or if you pay cash for something. Um so it didn't go through that bank account, that would be another situation. But no, generally we don't the days of entering ma receipts manually to like as a bookkeeper or an accountant, those days are done. Especially if, if you're already adding them up, depending if, if you're doing the bookkeeping and you, you say I've got, oh, I had $752 worth of fuel expense this year. We don't, we're not going to question you. We're going to go with the, the figure that you gave us. We don't, we're not going to audit you ourselves and add up your receipts and compare it to your numbers. Well, we'll t if you've already done the adding, we're, we're going with the number that you provided. I think that was answered perfectly. Okay. I, I think that wraps it up. Awesome. Thanks, guys. And thanks, everyone, for joining us. Hopefully, it was helpful and useful for you. If you have any questions as you're digging into those tools, um, you can check out our resources section on our website for some more information and uh, also some other recommendations of apps and uh, other types of things like templates and such that will help you out and um, you know, follow us on social and we'll let you know about the next webinar coming up uh, sometime in October. Yeah. Thank you so much, everybody. Hope you got some value out of it and we'll see you next month. Bye. Adios.